welcome back to another episode. I'm Chris, and today I want to introduce to you a camera that is new to me. It is an old camera from 2005. This is my new little baby, the Nikon D200. And it's not so little, I guess. It's actually a big brick. But this camera was literally under $100. So you can't beat that. And I thought it'd come out here and shoot some cool photos with this camera to really get a good feel of how this thing really works. This camera has a CCD image sensor. It's a 10.2 megapixel image sensor. And like I said, it came out in 2005. It is an Icon D200. Now this camera from uh, me looking it up on the internet and looking up sample images and just seeing what it can do, it looks like it was a pretty phenomenal camera. And I, for one, loved the picture quality, at least from what I saw. Now, I would like to try to get those kind of images myself because I love old cameras and I want to see what this little baby can do because honestly, it, this thing's heavy. Um, but it's a fun camera. It just has a real good Nikon feel, if you know what I mean. So let's see what this thing can do. And uh, I want to take some pictures and show you what I get. Okay. All right. Let's go take a little journey. Let's go have some fun and, and uh, go exploring. If you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It means a lot and it helps me out quite a bit. Thank you. Now enjoy the rest of the show. All right, so I want to test out the nighttime functions of this camera. It's not supposed to be that great at night, uh, according to this era of photography, where we have cameras can take amazing pictures at night now because they have higher ISOs. The ISO th that is the least noisiest on this camera is actually like 800 ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out and see what it can do, okay? Okay guys, so from what it looks like, the pictures are actually coming out pretty good according to what I see on the screen. Now I know this screen doesn't have as many pixels per inch when it comes to resolution, but I think I can get, um, a, according to what I see, it looks like the pictures are actually coming out. I could be wrong, we will see according to the colors and everything, it looks pretty nice. But I'm right now in 
uh, Oceanside Harbor. I'm just shooting pictures of the really cool lighthouse that is here. Um, right now it's lit up and actually there is a marine layer right now right above me. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna hold this light up a little more because my light's dying on my, for my camera. Anyway, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, it's, you know, uh, a really neat photo opportunity because there's reflections in the water and there's actually um, really, really neat lights out here. So we'll see how they come out. I'm gonna show you on the screen so you guys can go ahead and see what everything looks like for yourself. And keep in mind, this is only a $100 camera. It works with all Nikon lenses and it actually is a 10.2 megapixel sensor. So it should perform really well. When I had the Nikon D80, it uh, performed really well. Um, that camera did. So this, this actually has the same exact sensor. Uh, it is a little bit different, I think, uh, when it comes to um, how spread out the pixels are. But uh, overall, I believe it's supposed to be pretty much the same and a great camera. Anyway, so let me go ahead and show you what I got with these pictures and you can go ahead and decide for yourself if you'd like to pick up one of these cameras because they're really cheap and they're really good cameras. A few days before. The Nikon D200 might be an old camera, but it was once considered to be a high-end camera in its day. It was aimed to be used by not only the amateur photographer, but a true professional, indeed. As you can see, it's a very large camera, especially if you include the extra battery grip that holds an extra battery. It's almost a mirror image of the D300S because its size is identical. It has a fast shutter that shoots an astounding 5 frames per second in continuous shooting mode which also includes a high buffer rate. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay guys, so we're at the location that I wanted to come to to go ahead and test out this new camera of mine because it has the CCD 10.2 megapixel sensor. It actually takes some amazing pictures and I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of those in the video. I had the Nikon D80 before um, I got my Nikon D7000 and you know, that was a pretty good camera for its age. It was just a little bit slow, you know, but after the uh, the shutter gave out on that camera, I was so sad. So I finally got this camera and I'm so happy. It's a camera that I've been wanting for a very long time and I got it for under a hundred dollars. So you can't beat that, especially since the camera was originally like $1,700 to begin with back in the day. So yeah, really cool. I'm very happy about it. Check out this beautiful scenery we got here. Look at this. It's just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And I thought I'd go ahead and just try to get some some pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and use my 28 to 105 and see what I can get with this, you know, see if I can get some good pictures. I'm sure I can, you know. 
The thing about the CCD pro um, sensor is that it actually has a different kind of color and it renders pictures differently. So I want to see how it does. You know, I, I took some sample photos last night um, before I came out to see what it was like and I, I think they're beautiful. And I think it has to do with it being a CCD uh, image sensor. So let me go ahead and show you some of the images that I'm getting. And I hope you guys enjoy this because this camera is pretty awesome. And then we'll go from there. All right, guys, well, it's time for the quote or word of the day. And today, the word that I'm going to be talking about is balance. And balance, I feel, is such an important part of life that we fail to sometimes think about or even acknowledge. Because without balance, we can't make anything happen that we want to in a good way. Now, say you're in a photography class or you're just starting out and you're trying to learn your camera. And you want to have as much time as possible to learn your camera and get into it. Well, to make sure you have a good balance is to make sure that your other responsibilities are also taken care of as well. Because if those responsibilities are in the way of doing things that we love and uh, in the way of our passions or even in the way of learning something that we want to learn new, then we get in such a bad spot in our life. And we don't want that. So... When you think about it, you got to put enough weight into one thing and enough weight into the other thing and have some sort of center as well. It's so important that you do that and I'm learning this as well. It's not easy. I'm not going to lie. This is a very hard thing to do and to get this kind of balance is like trying to say the world is perfect as we know it. Well, that's not true. That's not true at all. In fact, sometimes the world, our world, can be a little chaotic in many ways. But you try to aim as close to it as possible by just putting enough energy into one thing and enough energy into things you love as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. I just thought I'd throw it out there because it's, in, it's been on my heart quite a bit. And it's something I've been trying to work on as a person and as just a creator, you know, just to trying to find, just trying to find balance in life to do the things I love, like make my YouTube channel and make these videos for you guys, because I love doing this, but I also have to make sure that I find the time to do what I need to do as well as a person. So that I don't feel like I'm putting those aside and, and not making sure that they're done. You know what I mean? So just a little thought, and I thought it might help you guys as well because it's been on my heart. All right, let's get back to the video. So the reason I did this video was to test this camera out because I just got it and I really wanted to see what it could do. And I hope the images that I show you are actually giving you a great idea of just that. And if they did, great, that's what I intended. Overall, this, this camera is an older camera, so the way it performs is gonna be a bit slower than what we are used to today. So keep that in mind. This camera was produced to replace the Nikon D100, which I believe was, a, was only a four megapixel camera. I can't remember. I'll leave it down there to show you what it was, but it wasn't a very, um, it wasn't a very fast camera when it came to, or not fast. It was a camera that didn't have many megapixels. 
and it really was kind of like, ooh, you know, that's where it was coming from. So, and then came on the Nikon D300S or D300, then the D300S. I believe the Nikon D70 was out, and but the Nikon D80 came from the Nikon D200, the technology anyway, but more compact. That's kind of what happened. According to Nikon, that's what, you know, I've read. Let's kind of do a little more history on this camera since it is an older camera. But yeah, hey, if you're just getting into photography, I would highly recommend getting one of these. Unfortunately, the shutter count only is supposed to go up to 100,000 clicks, which isn't very much compared to other cameras these days. But still, you can get your money's worth uh, out of this camera because it has a lot of the pro functions that Nikon put out back in the day and you will not be disappointed with what you can get it, it helps you practice helps you get better equipped and especially um, helps you learn the whole Nikon menu system now this menu system is a little bit older uh, it does um, it doesn't do as much as the newer ones do of course but hey you know still if you get into Nikon if you want to get into Nikon this is a great place to start to kind of familiarize yourself with where they came from and uh, where you're going when you end up getting a newer camera. But I would highly recommend this one if you are trying to get into photography, especially if you're getting into a photography class because this thing has so many options for what it is. It will, um, you can also get a battery pack that you can put on the bottom to make the battery last longer. The battery does kind of, <laughs> it's not the best for um, taking pictures. If you have a battery pack, it definitely increases the longevity of how long it lasts when you're taking pictures. I went through one battery so quick, it wasn't even funny because of uh, just taking nighttime pictures and just trying that. So that is kind of an issue. So make sure when you do get this camera, if you do get this camera, get extra batteries. You can get them on Amazon all day long, which I'll put a link in the description for that as well. They're gonna be generic batteries. They don't sell the uh, Nikon ones on Amazon unless you go through like KEH or MBP or something like that, uh, or eBay even. So you can go ahead and look into those options if you're interested, but I highly recommend getting the whole entire pack uh, with this camera it means the the battery grip the camera uh, make sure you get the uh, the back um, cover for the screen is very important so your screen doesn't get scratched up and um, get an intervalometer for this camera I think this camera has a lot of potential when it comes to nighttime photography you just have to use a lower ISO when it comes to um, you know, wanting to get things to blur out a little bit. Now, unfortunately, the ISO, when it's at a higher ISO, it's not gonna be that great because it's gonna have a lot more noise than say in like a Nikon D7000, unfortunately. But it's still fun to try out, still fun to use, and maybe you can even uh, get better at nighttime photography than uh, you would using just your phone. So, yeah just uh, something fun to try. I don't know who that was. I guess there's a, a person who lives in a boat. Anyway, let's see if I can get myself to focus here. All right, guys. Anyway, just a little FYI, a little information for your, your uh, knowledge. Okay. Okay, guys. Here's my little flashlight. See, I use this all the time. It's really handy little flashlight, just so you can see my face. It's really dark out here. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you guys can see upcoming videos that are going to be added. Oh, my flashlight died just now. <laughs> then we added, flashlight died. Anyway, hopefully you guys can see me. Um, hopefully, um, anyway, uh, so then you guys can see future content that will be added to this channel and uh, learn more because I'm all about trying to help everybody learn different things about photography and anything like that. And if you have any questions about this camera or anything 
um, related to anything at all with photography, please ask questions. I love answering questions and trying to find answers for them if I don't know it. Uh, it might be a little bit blurry right now, right here. <laughs> this, um, I'm using my Osmo right now instead of uh, my Sony, so I don't have much light. But uh, it works pretty good. Anyway, guys, I hope you're all doing well. Please take care, and I'll see you in the next video, okay? All right, bye. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to get notified when new videos get posted. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider checking out some of the other videos on the links at the end of this video.